Uh, thanks, Matt, and uh, thanks for the invitation. I have to admit that when I, when I took the, accepted the, the invitation, I hadn't read the time of the, uh, the, time of the, uh, of the talk. Uh, when, you, when you work for a daily newspaper, your whole life changes. It, it starts, your day starts much later, or, uh, it starts later and finishes later. So this, this is the middle of the night for me, so if I, if I fall asleep in mid-sentence on my feet here, you, 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 you'll understand. Um, uh, the, the reason I immediately accepted the invitation was that it was such a, a sort of wide-ranging uh, and, and, and empty canvas, so there was a lot, to, a lot to possibly think about and throw out some ideas. So there are two sort of big things I, I want to raise, not, not hugely, I would say, um, trends that are, that are positive, but I think things, two trends or two issues that maybe don't get highlighted enough, and in the spirit of sharing you know, thoughts and and, and, and possibly later on hearing what people have to say, um, I thought I'd focus on, on those two things. But, but first of all, to, to, to start, um, uh, would, would definitely like to start on, on a positive note around the whole area of innovation. Um, very famous historian of the last century uh, asked whether history was just one damn thing after another. Uh, whether there was no directionality to history. It seems extraordinary to me that anybody with, who, who looks at, at the way the world has, has developed uh, over the centuries could, could possibly uh, question the, the whether or not uh, there has been progress. It just seems uh, so obvious that we live, the lives we live are so much better than the lives uh, of people a few generations ago in terms of uh, how long we live and the risk of dying young and the risk of children dying uh, from disease, um, how we, uh, our nutrition, um, the homes we live in, in so many ways uh, life is better and, and life has been getting better uh, over the longer term for most people on the planet and even today for the poorest people on the planet access to things like medical care uh, infinitely better than they were um, decades and certainly a few decades ago and certainly centuries ago. Uh, and that's all you know, very positive and it all ultimately comes down to the human capacity to innovate. That, that desire and need to find new solutions to problems is something that uh, drives that progress and I think it's very much in, in an innate part of, 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 of who we are as, as, as a species, if, if you like. And I think it's one of the most uh, positive things and a source, of, uh, a source of sucker, I suppose, at a time, uh, at difficult times like this, that we'll always find uh, ways to, to improve uh, our situation. Uh, one example of that from over recent years is energy. Um, since back in the 70s, there's been a concern that we're going to simply run out of oil and gas. Uh, the, the, the energy revolution of the past few years has really transformed the concern that we're going to run out of, uh, run out of fossil fuels. Uh, innovation in how we find energy, uh, how we extract it, uh, and uh, efficiency uh, innovations all mean that really there is no concern anymore about running out of, uh, of fossil fuels which, which dominate our fuel mix and, and will continue to do so uh, for as long as anyone here is, is alive. So there's a, a one example of, of just the capacity for innovation and how it can uh, help solve, uh, solve problems. Uh, but one of the two, on a, on a less positive note, one of the two uh, issues that uh, I'd like to highlight is what seems to be a breakdown between the relation, in, in the relationship between innovation and economic growth. Uh, Robert Solow won the, economic, uh, the, the Nobel Prize for Economics uh, for some ideas he had on, uh, on, economic, on, on economic growth of the 1950s. Uh, and much later, he said, he admitted that, in fact, economists know very little about economic growth, and that's true, and I think most people sitting around listening to economists in the, in the last few years uh, wonder, well, if these guys know so much about the economy, why the hell did they not tell us uh, how, how fragile everything was, um, which is a, uh, a very fair criticism of the profession. Um, but in, in the theories of economic growth, almost everybody puts innovation really at the center, that the capacity to um, create new products and new ways of doing things is a, is a central driver of economic growth. Um, now that would, seem, that would certainly seem in every way seem true, and also uh, just looking back at history, one of the biggest innovations uh, of, uh, in human history was in, in relation to uh, the, the um, uh, 
uh, capacity to extract energy from coal, which led ultimately to the Industrial Re Revolution, which I suppose was the, the biggest single change uh, in human history. And throughout the 19th century, the result of that was that for the first time, there was a, a, an appreciable uh, rise in living standards within a very short period. That ran out of steam in the early 20th century because of wars and the Depression, but that, during that period from 1914 to 1945, there was still a lot of technological innovation going on. Uh, it, it just didn't trans translate into econ economic growth because of the, the, the uh, difficulties during, uh, uh, as a result of war and depression. But in the post-1945 period, uh, the world experienced, and certainly the rich world, the, the developed world of Europe and North America, uh, experienced the fastest ever uh, an explosion of growth. Nothing like it had ever been seen before. Uh, per capita incomes rose more over that period than any time uh, in the past, and, and our part of the world certainly uh, was entirely tra transformed by that. But since the 60s and 70s, and this is something that really, uh, I think, ha even economists, very few economists are talking about this, is that since the 1960s and 70s, there has been a marked and continuous slowdown in the rate of economic growth on a per head basis in the rich world. And that really does across the entire rich world uh, from North America, Europe, and to Japan. Um, and in Japan and Italy, two of the G7 countries, uh, economic growth really has ground to a halt. Uh, and that's, that's been the case now for more than a decade. Uh, and it's particularly instructive uh, for Japan because Japan is one of the most innovative countries in the world in terms of uh, per capita uh, patenting every year. Uh, Japan is way up there with Switzerland. It's a highly innovative country, but despite the enormous uh, innovative capacity in Japan, this is an economy that really has not grown for well over a decade. Uh, something that uh, must be cause for concern. Uh, just to finish on, on that point, again, coming back to, to Robert Solo, he made, he made the observation in the early 90s, I think it was, or late 80s, that you can see computers everywhere except in the growth statistics. Uh, and that pretty much uh, is, is something that, that can still be said today, that despite the huge innovations in, in uh, IT and the, the advent of the internet, um, one would think that those uh, innovations would have spurred economic growth. Uh, they allow uh, the costs of getting into a business to, to the, the barriers to, to entry to fall, costs of doing business to fall. One would have thought that, that would have been a, a huge uh, growth impetus, but despite uh, the, the, the IT revolution, uh, there has been a continued downward trend in economic growth. Um, and th this issue is one I think that uh, we all need to talk more about uh, to try and see uh, what the problem is and how the wonderful innovations and uh, the, the, the accelerating pace of innovation uh, can translate to economic growth uh, and help uh, increase, uh, increase prosperity. Uh, the, the second uh, issue uh, that uh, I'd like to raise is the issue of innovation and entrepreneurship in this country. If I had a euro for every time I've sat through a speech by a minister saying that we Irish are wonderfully entrepreneurial, um, I would be as rich as the most successful entrepreneurs. Um, it, it, it's so pervasive that uh, when Barack Obama was here last year, uh, it's that we being uh, exceptional entrepreneurs, managed to get into one of his speeches. Um, so it's, it seems to be something that's very widely, um, widely held view. Yet when you dig around, you find out, okay, well, what's this based on? What, what, sort of, what sort of comparative figures is this, uh, is this claim uh, based on? And you find that it comes down to a single report, a report called the Global Entrepreneurship Monitor, um, that Enterprise Ireland, a state agency, a, a fine agency that it is, it, it is uh, sponsors. Uh, and this uh, report uh, 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 is conducted by a couple of Irish academics, and it, it's centred in the U.S., where they do uh, they bring it all together for different countries. And it finds that we, we are. Yet, it, looking at that report, I have to say I find it thoroughly unconvincing. And the other data that we have uh, on corporate demographics, which is not uh, surpri surprisingly thin, but from the the, the the hard data that we have, uh, Ireland does not stand out as being a particularly entrepreneurial country. Uh, and in terms of that entrepreneurial, innovative thing, to me, the, the killer fact uh, in, in the, what, what it could be a, um, a serious problem, what is a serious problem in my view, uh, is this, that we all know this country is a very successful exporting country. One of the biggest exporters per capita uh, uh, relative to the size of the economy in the world. Um, but what's 
unique about this economy is that only one-tenth of our exports are accounted for by indigenous companies. 90% accounted for by foreign companies. Now, let's just do a little exercise. If, if, and it won't happen, but if all of the foreign companies left tomorrow and they, their exports stopped, the Irish economy would be the most closed economy in Europe among 27 countries. Um, currently, Greece is the most closed economy. Ireland, with just that 10% of exports, we would be even lower than Greece. And I think that says uh, a lot. Um, innovation in a small open economy for, uh, in a small economy for, uh, for, for companies, the most important innovation, to my mind, is not necessarily new products, uh, it's market penetration. It's being able to get into new markets because a small country is never going to get rich selling things only to people within that small economy. It, it has to specialize, it has to export. Um, and the fact that our indigenous companies export as little as they do has to be a cause for concern. Um, we all know the expression paradigm shift. Uh, that, that was coined by a guy called uh, Thomas Kuhn just over 50 years ago. Uh, and it was in a paper he wrote that became hugely influential called The Structure of Scientific Revolutions. Uh, and in that he, he noted, he, he, he claimed, or his, his theory was, that there are three stages that the paradigm is normal. Uh, it goes into a period of crisis when the uh, underpinnings of the paradigm begin to, are, are contradicted by the evidence before people's eyes. Uh, and then you go into the third and final stage of revolution where there's an adapt, uh, an adaption, a change to what's going on. Uh, I think in, in this country we've clearly, we're in a crisis period and we, we all know that we've been that for quite a while, but I'm not sure we've got into that revolutionary period in terms of thinking about our own indigenous industry, um, given that our ministers continue to, to, to talk about this, uh, this exceptional entrepreneurial uh, capacity. It would seem to me that the way we start to address that uh, and um, do something about it is to recognize there is a problem in the first place. So I think, um, and I'd certainly be interested in, in, in views anybody has on this, that uh, recognizing that we do have a problem with innovation, particularly that most important of innovation, uh, accessing foreign markets by our indigenous companies, is a very important issue. And the sooner we recognize it, maybe the sooner we could do something about it. Thank you.